you know why I like so much uh, uh, this uh, quantum physics against uh, this Einsteinian view? Because it's uh, usually, and I think they're idiots. I hope we will agree here generally. Usually, people claim uh, Einstein was more a materialist, objective reality, and so on, while Bohr uh, uh, opened up the path for all this stuff. But I believe that it's almost the opposite, that uh, that uh, Einstein is interesting. You know his famous uh, uh, b retort to Niels Bohr, God doesn't play dice, and then he even says that I don't believe in personal God, but there is a divine, the, the divine dimension in this eternal uh, cosmic order, the beauty of laws of nature, and so on and so on. And we all know, Bohr, here I bow my head to him, gave a perfect answer. Don't tell God what to do. <laughs> what not to do? <laughs> yes, very no, What, what I like here is that I think that if, not in the sense of any fully religious sense, but in a sense of a belief in a firm order of our reality, this is, for me, the most basic, uh, even today I would call it not theological dimension, but this belief in what in my Lacanian jargon I call the big other. If, even if we don't know it, there is a cosmic order and so on. But uh, you know that uh, here I think that quantum mechanics opens up a path to a much more radical materialism, and I put it, maybe you know the story in this way, and I was so glad, narcissistically. Uh, two, three months ago, I watched on Austrian TV an interview with the Austrian guy, Zeilinger, who, no? Zeilinger, the, one of the three, okay. And uh, uh, the uh, interviewer, a lady, asked him, literally mentioning my name, that what about my idea that quantum, this old joke that I like to repeat, you probably know it, that quantum physics demonstrates that God is an imperfect, lazy idiot, you know, that God was too lazy to determine things to the end, and we, as it were, went too far, and he said that, that th there is a long, at least in Europe, I word, a long-standing joke about this, that quantum physics is one big proof that God is lazy. She didn't want to do all the work, you know, and that now, so uh, uh, I think this is my big effort. We have, we are on the same line here, I think. How to read quantum mechanics in a strict materialist way? How to get rid of all this, you know, quantum mechanics means, uh, uh, you know, the whole syllogism is horrible. Quantum mechanic means only observer brings possibilities to reality. A, the universe really exists. B, so there must be a mega observer who is, uh, who is God. But still, let's maybe slowly and get that conclude with some. So I will have to think a lot more because I'm still bothered. And I will quote you amply by your final formula, which is this wonderful one of uh, many words interpretation. We can describe the world perfectly, we just don't know where we are in it. My goal, I obviously don't know enough of science, is to somehow in a totally, not in an idealist way, this means uh, uh, reality has to have an observer, but in a truly materialist way, to somehow find a crack inconsistency in reality, which is not subject, but which opens up the space for subjectivity. In what sense? Let me conclude before I confuse you. Because we here come at the point of freedom. I read Penrose, who likes to... He's one of those who think that you can ground human freedom in quantum phenomena. But I think that even if you accept a radical uncertainty, uh, openness, this is not freedom. Freedom is not, as intelligent people point out all the time, freedom is not contingency. 
freedom is a different sort of determinism. I do that because I decided so and so on. So this quick link, and it's very popular among cheap philosophers today. Oh, but doesn't already quantum physics open up the space for freedom?